Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going live. Okay. Very soon, it's just loading. <laughs> I, will, I will wait here. I will see more yeah. names in a second. So is this streaming from Zoom to Facebook or? It is, yeah, you are live, Paul. Hello, everybody. I'm live, Paul. My name is, uh, so you can hear me, my name is Paul Wallace. I'm one of the uh, fitness instructors. I'm a personal trainer and director exercise specialist. I work here at the Buchanan Center with a certain class on Tuesdays and Thursdays, normally. Right now we're doing that live on Zoom with our classes. Everyone's working really hard from home. Um, so the Canada Center asked me to come in and do a couple sessions um, to volunteer, which I'm happy to do, absolutely. It's a fantastic community. To come and just help people get moving and whatnot. So the exercises today are fairly basic, work to your limits. There is getting down on the mat. There is getting back up. For equipment, if you have some lighter dumbbells, some sort of medium weight dumbbells, um, a towel, some water, I have my stopwatch, a mat, and a bench or a couple chairs or a strong coffee table. We'll be getting down to this position. One knee up, one hand up, bend our knee flat back, and doing some weights in this position here. While we're looking down. So a stable structure for that, if you have it in your home, would be fantastic. We did this uh, class similar to this a few weeks back. I think about a month, month or so back, five, five weeks ago. I don't know, it's the ERB time is just flying. And Brandy was on the computer and she was chatting to people saying, hey, how are you, everything? So we have Alicia from Calgary who's running this for us through Zoom into Facebook. So I see Zoom, you see Facebook, and together we're just one big fitness family. So it's all good. So again, so some light weights, medium weights, towel, mat, water, some kind of bench structure. Normally in my class, I can see my participants to see how they're doing. So this will be me talking to a picture of myself with a camera, and it's very weird. But let's do it. So in my circuit class, I go through the power moves, and we do them mostly standing. Um, if you do want to modify for sitting and whatnot, then you probably are aware of how to do those PWR moves yourself. Um, the first one I like to do is called the Good Samaritan. Well, it's what I've named. I've taken all the names and changed them because side lunge arm elevation is a boring name. So I call it the Good Samaritan. So imagine you're in floodwaters, the chain of people going across a muddy river in Indonesia. And you're reaching up your hand to get help out of the muddy water to the next bend, but you're not gonna forget your fellow man behind you. This arm turns, palm is up, roughly a 45 degree angle. In addition to that, our feet are forward. Now our feet turn sideways, we shift our weight to this leg. Help me out of the water, turn your head, see where they're reaching, but don't forget your fellow man, hence the Good Samaritan. So it is a sidestep lunge, reach, arm is rotated, palms up, and back to center. That happens on both sides. That's our Good Samaritan. So we're going to do 10 of those, five per side, pick a side to start, and I'll count this down. 10, 9, excellent. Eight, step back in. Seven, shift that weight. Six, back up. Five, this is so weird talking to myself. Four, three, two, and one more. One, excellent. Nice little back lunge, bit of leg work. This one's called clap and open. Well, I call it clap and open. Feet, but shoulder width apart. Arms are out. We are going to bring our arms out so you see behind the body. So there, we try to keep our arms straight. The population does have some issues trying to get those arms out, trying to get those elbows locked back. When we rotate to one side, arms are out. We are starburst. The feet, not super wide, under shoulders. We rotate. The hand claps. Look at that hip. That hip has turned forward. My hips are practically facing sideways. I rotated that foot. You see it from the side. It looks like that. This hip comes forward. Okay, so pick one side, rotate, clap hard. This arm stays up, and we open. We open here. We are pulsing backwards. Again, safely. We're not like yeah, and then our back goes lock, and we all cry. We don't want that. Take a side, rotate, clap, and open. That's our pulse back. When we pulse back, chin's up, proud chest. 
Chest is up and out. On here, here. Big booms. Okay, so let's start. 10, clap, open, nine, eight, rotate that hip, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I love that one with the shoulders. Feels good. This one is another step forward weight shift. I call it tequila and the cookie jar. Much like our good Samaritan, up out of the water, help my fellow man. We're now stepping forward. I watch my feet. I step forward, shift the weight up onto this foot. This foot is up, weights on the front leg. Reach up for my tequila, keep the kid out of the cookie jar. Again, that back arm, rotated palm up and up, level to this arm. We're reaching high. We're reaching up with that arm. You want to have full extension from fingers to fingers. When you're reaching, these are out. We're not like, yeah, I've got it. Reach as far as you can. Push up, pull back. So it's a step forward and up. Boom. Palm is up. Get that tequila from that top shelf. Watch out for that kid in the cookie jar. And then back in, other side. Weight shift, toes up. Cookie jar. Eyes on the prize. Reach up high. Okay, here we go. Ten. Full extension of those arms. Nine. Reach. Eight. Step back. Step forward. Seven. Six. Look where you're reaching. Don't spill that tequila. Five. Four. Don't forget about that cookie jar. Three. Kids are devious. Two. One. Oh, so that's a nice extension. Feel that right across the back. Here, but on the back, just, oh, that's beautiful. Okay, let's do our fire brigades now. Fire brigades are similar to the Good Samaritans, but we're horizontal. I call it fire brigades because I think of the old fashioned fire. There's the pond, the church is on fire, and everyone's got those pails of water they're passing. You know that fire brigade line, fire line, water. I, I forget the actual, I'm sure there's a word for it, a phrase for it. The old fashioned fire line of buckets going back and forth. Then the stop the chapel from burning down. So our step goes out to the side again. We shift that weight. With the fire brigade, instead of being up here, we are here. We're horizontal. So we're making sure we're watching. Make sure the person takes the pail. We don't drop that water. We're also reaching back for that next pail. So again, palm is up, arm is up. Try and rotate that shoulder, bring that up. You feel a stretch across your back. Again, reach here and reach here. Shift that weight out of our base of support. Boom. It is perpendicular. So if I'm sideways, I'm stepping like this. Shifting my weight to the side and turning my foot. All the foot, this foot stays flat. We lean into it. Take that bucket, even the next bucket. Come back in. We realize it's actually not the church. It's a school that's on fire. And we change sides. There's a lot of fires in this town. Okay, here we go. Pick a side, and we'll count down from 10. 10, get that arm up. Nine, watch where you're going. Eight, seven, don't drop that bucket. Six, don't forget the next bucket. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah, good stuff. Okay, we're gonna loosen things up a bit in our bodies. Let's get my stopwatch good to go here. We're gonna do about 30 seconds of high knees. High knees are just lifting that knee up in front of your body. Just to get things loosened up in the hip flexors. Centric on the hamstrings. That's not right. 30 seconds here just to do this. Then we're going to stretch out our quads as well. Okay, let's switch just to butt kicks now. The butt kicks are just bring that bum foot up to your bum. Just like that. 
a donkey kick. So as best you can, if you can lift the leg here, still give us a stretch because you're going to feel that stretch in the front of those thighs. Uh, good stuff. All right, we are hitting the mats now. We're coming on down for some planks. Great for core stability. Now, there's many different ways of doing planks. You can do a high plank, which is basically a push up way up here where you stay and hold this position. It can be pretty hard on the wrists. You can grab some weights, not for lifting. You can put your hands on the weights, and that changes the weight on your wrists as far as stability is concerned. Your wrists are being cranked like that. You can do it on top of your dumbbells if you want. Another way of doing a plank, come down on the elbows like this. You also have the option, if that's a bit too much, to come down off the knees like this. I prefer either hands flat in front of you like this or in sensei, which is a fist, one hand wrapped around. I don't like intertwining fingers. People tend to put a lot of pressure. They squeeze their hands. But if you're a sensei fist, you don't. It's a mind thing. So we are doing these. We're doing 30 seconds, four times with 10 second rest in between. So two minutes of planks, which is really not that much. So come on down, wherever you're comfortable, and let's start. 30 seconds. As far as looking for your head, look just in front of your hands on the floor. There you go. Don't put all your weight on your elbows. Your elbows should be underneath your shoulders vertically to support you. Adjust as necessary. 20 seconds in. We'll do 10 seconds rest in between each 30 second set. Almost to 30. All right. 10 seconds of rest. So think about where you felt that. Was it in your back? Your arms feeling okay? Did you have a bit of shake in that belly on those sides? That's okay. Shaking is fine. All right, another 30 seconds. Shaking is working. Down we go. Keep those elbows underneath that body. Try not to banana too much or pike. Press that level. Tuck that bum in. A cue is to take your belly button and pull it towards your spine. Not really sucking your tummy in, just bracing your core. Five more seconds, round two. I'm shaking. And rest. Two down, two to go. Okay, let's come back in. Stop watching on that, all right. Another 30 seconds. Down three. When this is done, we'll have a minute and a half under our belts. Awesome. Good fun. And we're going to stay on the mat for a bit. Halfway through the third set. Find your elbows sore, push your hands into the mat. And time. Our last 10 seconds of rest. I got a bit of a, I almost got a bit of a sheen happening there. Just starting to sweat a tiny bit. Okay, last one. Come on down. Last 30 seconds. All right. Hope everyone's modifying as required. If you are, like, got to tap out for a second. Put a knee down, give yourself a couple of breaths, and then come back in. Almost there, and time. Beauty. Oh. Okay, we're gonna stay down on our mats. Now it's time for some bird dogs. So a bird dog is a arm leg extension, so we put our knees under our hips, Vertical here, hands under shoulders. Wouldn't worry too much about the wrists on here because it's not as heavy as doing a plank for holding. We take one arm, we look straight down, take one arm, we bring it up, we take the opposite leg back. 
When we do, we pull those toes toward the body. Toes up, I call it. So not toes pointed, but toes up. And then we come back in. And that is one. Take the opposite arm, opposite leg. And back in. Two, we are doing five per side. So I'm gonna start with my left side for my camps. And go at your own pace. Make each arm and leg combination go five times. That's two for me on the left. Just really reach out. Three. Four. Five. That helps stretch out those pieces we just planked and made a bit tight. Okay, if you have a wall handy, I hope you do. A wall or a chair, something you can lean against. This is called the standing oblique crunch. So you probably remember crunches from school, what people call them random ab crunches. We're basically we're crunching forward right here on our belly. We're like, ah, ah, kill me, why does this suck so bad? What we're gonna do is we're gonna target the obliques. Muscles on the side. There's a canister of muscles that wrap around this little part of our body. Here we have a lot of muscles in our structure, our ribs up here, down to our hips is strong. Here there's a spine in the back, and it's just muscle holding this all together. How does this move like this? But it's also very prone to injury, especially across the back. We tend to avoid these pieces, rotationals and the side strength. We're going to target these obliques right now. You can grab onto a wall or a chair. We want to make a tripod of support. Chair wall is part one, inside foot is part two, and is part three. Boom. Now I've got a little tripod in here. This is strong. I'm not falling over, I'm not falling forward or backwards, I'm good. This leg kicks out, body slightly leans, arm overhead, biceps to ears. I'm gonna bring this down, elbow, lift my knee up. Look at my shoulders. My shoulder has come down, my right shoulder, and my right shoulder's gone up. Boom. If you're doing this, Bring this leg up, you're gonna feel it right here in the side. That's a standing oblique crunch. Let me check my notes. We are doing 10 per side. Here we go. One. At your own pace. Two. Breathing but bring that shoulder down. Three. Four. Five. Halfway through. Six. You feel that right in there? Yeah, you're nailing it. Yeah. Okay. Switch sides again. Base of support, base of support, base of support. I'm not going anywhere. Up and out. One. Two. Three. Try to keep your body upright or trying to come forward or looking to keep the body straight. Turn it sideways. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. Oh, yeah, that was good. So by now, everything we're doing, we're probably feeling pretty worked all through here, which is nice. Let me flip my sheet. Oh, fun stuff. Okay, we're still up on our feet now. Grab some water if you haven't had any for a while. If you're getting really sweaty, towel off, keep those hands dry for safety. Standing rotational knee tuck. Now this guy is, what do we got? 10 reps per side, okay. Put our hands up like we're Pollyanna in the window. Hi, we're back to you. Hands are up. We rotate our body to one side, head stays over top of the hands. If I turn to the side, you see this? Then we take the same leg to the side we turn to, and we lift it up, we do a high knee and put it back down. We take the other side, high knee, put it back down. You'll feel it. Absolutely. Okay. Let's give it a twist. So we're doing 10 per side. 10. Nine. Get that head to follow those hands. Eight. 
Try to bring that foot directly or the knee directly in front. Seven. Sometimes we can have it go out like this, and we're looking to keep it straight in front of us. Six. I bet you feel that across your back, but lower your shoulder blades. Mid back. I'm willing to bet. Willing to bet. Okay, Russian twists. We're down on the mat, guys and girls and everybody else. So Russian twist. Flat back. Feet together, knees together. We can do them like this, where we lift off the ground. You can also have your heels resting on the floor. If you lift them up, you'd be shaken. Resting on the floor. You can use a weight. If you so choose. And we are rotating side to side, like this. Turn those shoulders. So what I'd like to avoid is this, my hands. Not looking for that, looking for this. Bring that shoulder forward. Okay, we are doing 20 reps. So we'll count them down or count them up on one side. Start here, feet together, knees together. They can be off the ground or just touching. 20, 19, 18, 17. Keep on going. 15. Whoo, good times. 12, 10, almost done. Knees together. Six, four, three, two, one. Whew. Oh man, I may have felt those. All right, up on our feet. 30 seconds of high knees, just to keep things slow and easy. After this, we're going to do some push-ups. We're going to use our homemade benches for some renegade row with a fly. And I'll show you those as we go. Don't worry about it. Nice high knees. How high can you get them without losing balance? Bring them right up. Oh. Okay, switching to butt kicks. Butt kicks, I prefer to have the legs down. We're not butt kicking here. But kicking backwards, we're donkeys. We don't kick for it. Of course, we don't like behind us. Keep the knees pointed at the floor. Try and kick that butt. I'm a cyclist, I have very tight, strong legs, so can't quite reach my butt like I used to. Ah, just stretch more. Ah. All right. Down for push ups. We're doing push-ups. 10 seconds on. 10 seconds off. Three times. As many push-ups as you can manage safely. Again, you can use weights here or any kind of padding you may have to support the wrists so they're not pushing to this position if it's uncomfortable for you. Some people have wrists that don't like this. If you're a, a bad ASS, Punch them up. As long as you can support it, as long as you're strong enough to do this and not hurting yourself. The push ups, you can do them from the knees. You can push up here. You want to need to do a little bit wider, like off the mat. You can do them here. Put them up on the feet. And then here. Super, super hard way is hands really tucked in close. Elbows beside the body. Oh, yeah, that's, that's fun. Okay. Did 15 seconds, right? Yeah, I did. Let's change it. We're going to do 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, three times. So straight right now, 10 seconds of push-ups. Whatever you can manage. Stop. Do 
10 seconds of rest, uh, just to go, oh, wow, push-ups are hard in our memory. I haven't done a push-up since 76, or whatever it is. Okay, back in we go. Another 10 seconds, push-ups. We're doing this three times. All right, push-ups are lowering your chest, not your head. Oh, and time. Whew. Those make me sweat. Yeah. That's a lot of body work. All right, one last time. Here we go. 10 seconds of push ups. And time. Oh, what a shame those are over. I was really enjoying this. Oh. Okay, here I need you to grab a weight, a lighter weight or a medium weight, because the renegade fly on our homemade bench kind of hits different muscle areas. So, if we face to the bench to our right side, we put our right knee on the bench, our right hand on the bench. We lower our shoulders to the level, we bend our upright leg, we bring our bum level, we keep our back flat. Am I rounded back right there? Not looking for that. Looking for this, bring that back down. The weight is gonna come right up, elbow brushing the body, Look right in like this. So if you are the ground, up like this, elbow tucked in. Not looking for this lift, I'm looking for this lift. And when we fly, we bring it out like this. Where again, you are the ground. Let me show you. Throw and a fly. Do you want to pick a weight that's not too heavy for the fly part? This is a six pounder, it might be a bit much for the fly for my arm. I'm going to switch down to a four, which is a bit light for the renegade for me, but I need it for business. How many notes say? My notes say we were doing this a bunch of times. 10 reps per side. Okay. The most important thing here flat back, not round your back, flat back. I guess bring those elbows in. Up, down, fly. And 10 reps, thing at round four. Keep that back flat. Weight should be even between your hands, your knees, and your feet. That's part of round eight. Best thing about our bodies is we have two sides. Let's switch over to the other side of our bench. Again, the bench is to our left side. Left knee, left hand, shoulders flat, back flat, knee slightly bent to make those hips level. We don't want this hip to be up higher than we don't want to be tipped away. We want to be a tabletop, nice and flat. So again, elbows in tight, up, down, fly. Control. When we fly, the arm is straight. Two. Elbow brushes the body. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Get your 10 in here. Maybe you're already done. Maybe you got some time left to add a couple in there. Maybe you just wrap it around seven. Whew. And feel that top back of those arms. Still toys. Mm, good stuff. Good stuff. I'm grabbing some water. But because I'm seeing Zoom and you guys are seeing Facebook, I don't know exactly what time we started. I'm just going to go through my workout. Your time runs out. Your time runs out. You need to go somewhere else. I got another uh, 
maybe 15 minutes, give or take. Give or take, okay, we're doing some crab walks. So crab walks are feet a little wider than shoulder, bend down, stick our bums back. So we're not, lean, we're not leaning like this, coming down, bums are back. Look at that back, look how flat that back is. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. I'm gonna come down like that, keep our toes facing forward, and walk to the side. Trying to stay down, so we're trying to avoid this. We're not squatting, crab walk is staying down. Crabs don't go up and down, they skid it. Crab walks like that. Okay, so we're gonna do 10 reps. Five one way, five the other. If your space is only two, do two, four, six, eight. So we have 10 full steps in here, okay? Coming down for your crab walks, low back, and 10 crab walks. One, two, three, four, squeeze them more in there. Oh, 10 for me. Whew. Feeling it right there? Yeah, maybe a bit right here? Yeah, good stuff. Okay, pentagon toe taps. You know a pentagon shape, it is one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna tap two, four, five, three, and around to one. I'll show you. The normal pentagon is one, Two, three, four, five, pushing back. We're gonna go to the front, number two, number four, number five, number three, lift up and around to number one. We wanna do it by loading this leg. So if you saw from the side, I'm gonna show up my leg a bit so you can see my knee. Woo! That cycling muscle, strong point. Okay. Bend this knee, we load it up. This is off the ground. We are not leaning on this foot. We are tapping. Everything's staying on this leg. This leg has all the weight. So we go tap, back tap, way back tap, and we cross back behind us, tap, come all the way around, foot off the ground, tap number one, and come back in. Okay? So take the leg to load up. I'll start with this one now because it's gonna do some work. Tap, tap, way back, tap, cross behind, tap, lift, bring all the way to the front and cross again, tap, foot, ooh, I fell over. Other leg, load it up, bend that knee, tap, tap, way back, cross behind, tap, way in front, stay down, tap, and back in. Whew. Once more each leg. Take that leg, really challenge yourself, really load that leg up, bend down, flat back, tap, tap, way back, tap. How far can you reach safely? Tap, way in front, tap, and back up. Oh, that was hard. Okay, I'm reaching as far as I can. You stay within your limits. I'm just pushing mine. Tap, tap, way back, tap hands anywhere you want them, press behind, tap, weight is still all right here, it's holding it all, tap, and back in, whew, you feel that on the outside of the knees, and the calves, or a bit inside the ankles too, do a couple of these, just point and lift, point and lift, point and lift, in each foot. Just to activate those calves, stretch them out a bit for me. Solid. Okay, we're doing star killer shuffles now. This is a move that I'm pretty sure I created for Parkinson's time to my circuit class. We start off super small. We are a we are a red dwarf. Whatever happened there before you go supernova, that's what we are. Feet are together. Or as close as you can for your race of support. We don't want any tipping over. We come in small, our bums are back. We are tucked in and look like this. Be a downhill skier. Tucked in nice and small. Then we come out, star killer. Boom. Now notice I'm not lunging to this side. My weight is between my two legs. My legs are out, my legs are tight, my bum is squeezed, my arms are out. Boom, power, jazz hands. 
I'm not really pushing too far back, but I am coming up and out. And it's a progressive movement. So we start small, we have downhill skier to supernova. Again, remember, look, I'm in the middle. I'm not here. In the middle, then I come in small. Then I go big, then I go small, then I go big. Okay, so each one down and up is a count of one. And we are doing 10 star pillars. So use your space. If it's two, if it's five, whatever you can make across, get 10 star pillars in. And the star is the big one. So one, two. And again, we're not lunging, we're opening in the middle of that space. Three, I'm balanced. Four. Five, six, feet are firmly planted, heels and toes, seven, eight, nine, one more star killer, ten. Whew. Oh, I like those very much. Okay, back to those high knees. Keep those bodies moving. You find your knees doing this, you're gonna have to try and bring them right forward. Pretend there's a target on the wall. Every time your knee hits that wall, you get 10 points. Yeah. You put your hands there to help you. Each time you hit your hands, that's a cookie. I don't know, it's up to you if you want a cookie or not. The virtual cookie, I'm, 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 I'm. virtually delicious. All right, switching to butt kicks. These guys, again, knees stay down. Might come forward a tiny bit. We're just not looking for this. I'm not looking for a knee lift, for a bum kick. The butt kick stretches here. The high knee stretches here. So the opposite side of the movement is where we're stretching out. This is stretching out our quads, tell our tendon. Looking at doctor hits, make sure leg twitch goes under your kneecap. Yeah, we're stretching that right here. Keeping it active. Okay, this one I have written down is sit to stand to overhead lunge. This is kind of a big one. Okay. You have a seat. Have our feet as close together as you comfortably can, where you can stand up. We're going to stand up and lunge. Come back and sit down. Okay, now, as far as the overhead is concerned, you can use a weight or just have your hands. You can add this in as necessary, as desired. As you step forward, put your hands overhead. And back down, sit down. Now, if your foot, other foot hasn't moved, you know where the chair is. The chair hasn't moved, one of your legs hasn't moved. So we shouldn't need to come back from a lunge and check for our chair. Oh, thank God, still there. You know it's there. You know it's still there. You can come in, lunge, back up. This one hasn't moved. I know my chair is still there. So you can look if you need to, but you can trust. Unless your chair is on wheels or you have little kids that hate you, your chair is still gonna be here. Not a problem. Okay, so let's start sitting. And let's do five per side. What do I have? Is five per side? Yeah, five per side. We're sitting down. The reason I want feet close together is if I'm lunging like five feet are like this, and I get up and I lunge, this is a really wide base of support. This is not challenging what I want to challenge. My feet are close together and I step forward, boom, now I'm challenging this balance. Also with the arms. So you can keep your arms here, arms here. The biggest challenge is arms here. And back, the foot hasn't moved. Your chair is still there. Have a seat. All right. Five per side. Your own pace, whatever you need to do. Five per side. So let's up, lunge, chair is still there. Oh. 
Oh, yeah. Whew. I'm at three. One more each side for me. Oh, oh man, that's a towel, yeah, that is. All right, do you have a flat wall? Do you have somewhere you can lean against and keep your low back flat? I don't have much here. We do what's known as a wall sit. A wall sit for 30 seconds. We're gonna sit in a chair. We ain't using no chair. No, we are using our legs. Keep us propped against the wall. Bend our knees, feet are not directly under our feet. We don't put a lot of pressure through our knees. Feet are slightly forward. So if you're sitting down, your feet are slightly, look at my front leg, slightly in front of you. We don't want to be down like this. That puts all the pressure right here. Feet can be hip width a little bit more. We hold this. We're using your legs, pushing you against the wall. We're here for 30 seconds. First few seconds, you're like, this isn't so bad. Then your body starts talking to you in stern language. We try and sit up right, body's up, feet are sliding. All right here on top of your legs. Your quads are probably steel right now, supporting that weight through your legs. 10 more seconds. Oh boy, I'm feeling it. Mm. Good times. Oh, shucks, 30 seconds is up. Oh, oh man. Oh, that's good stuff. And again, to that, we're into high knees. And then we're into cool down after some butt kicks. Again, 30 seconds. I'm so worried not being able to see anybody. I see myself, and that's like a fitness mirror. It's very weird. All right, especially those butt kicks and those feet back. Again, knees stay down. Oh boy. Okay, so last bit, we're in the cool down now. All right. Oh. Shoulder rolls, big shoulder rolls on each side. Really take those shoulders back. Like your backstroke swimming, but just the shoulders. These arms are going to bring in a bit of lats, and I don't want to have the lats. No, just the shoulders. And a double, same time. Both together. Really bring them forward. Up, hug those ears, reach back, feel your shoulder blades digging down your back, bring it back around. Oh, oh living dreams. Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, this is called Wise T's Dance. This is my class all the time. This is actually part of my corrective exercise continuum for people that walk like this. With upper cross syndrome. If you work on a computer a lot, you probably stand like this. Anterior rolled shoulders, rotated hands, having tight lats and tight chest. This helps counteract that. We do to take our feet, both shoulder width apart, plant those on the ground, slightly bend our knees, slightly take our bums back. This is kind of like this. Slight bend on the knees, slight bit above back. That means everything down here is working and it won't help compensate for movement up here. Bend knees, bend bums, arms beside you, boom, into a Y. Just down past parallel, back up, into a T, right back. Boom, right back like that. Then arms go in front, palms facing forward, into an A, beside our bodies like this, boom. Brushing our thighs, that's an A. Now when we do the A, if you feel it on the back of your arm and not your back, before you come back into the A, put a slight bend in your elbows. 
and then come back. That takes the tricep out and lets us stretch the lat. What if we just stretch right here? You know, in swimmers, like Michael Phelps, he goes like this and he's shaped like a triangle, like a wind sail. That is the lats. These muscles are responsible for this movement, which is why swimmers have huge wings. Latissimus dorsi. Good stuff. Bent knee, crack bum. Wise. Where's my belly? Bigger shirt or less belly? Ten, or sorry, T's. Eight. Again, bend those elbows if you need to. Right back up in the Y's. Just one more time after this set. T's. Unity. Thumbs up. A's. One more. Y's. T's. A's. Oh, good fun. And one last stretch is to come on down the mat. Stretch out the back of our legs because we worked in a bit, but we hadn't really stretched them. This is called the modified herders. Get the both legs in front. Take one leg out to the side, your choice. Boop. Have your foot, bend it in, and tuck it in by your knee. This foot stays upright. We want a flat back for this. So we don't want to hunch over. We want to keep a flat back, proud chest. Same arm, same leg, lean forward. It's not about how far you can stretch. If you can reach way down here, keep this knee down, or you can only reach to here, that's fine. We're looking for a stretch above the knee on the back. How far you can reach does not matter. I want the stretch, not the reach. Even that knee, knee as down as you can. Much like I said before, with the elbows in the population, we keep the elbow straight. Getting that knee down can be a challenge. Try and push that knee down as you're stretching. Hold this one for quite a while, 16 to 20 seconds. Uh, we will hit this thing again, so the stretch will feel a bit different on the second round. Beauty, okay, switch legs. So bring those legs in, other leg out, knee in. Toes up, same arm, same leg, flat back, knee. And again, stretches behind that knee. You're probably thinking about it now and you can feel it. Just above on the back of the knee and those connection points for all those knee muscles. They call it the quads because there's actually four muscles. We think quads, we think one muscle in here. It's actually all four muscles up here. Quadriceps is the vastest brothers. Good fun. Back in, legs in front, back the other leg. Round two. If you're doing the modified herders, suggest you do each leg twice to get the best stretch out. If you do it once, there's a benefit to going twice. Research says doing it twice is better than doing it once. Which, what a shocker. But in this case, we don't really tend to stretch the back of our legs very much. We tend to sit in a tight position, sitting in a chair or lounging on the couch or lying down, or standing up or under tension. So anytime we can stretch the back of our legs, Good time. So if doing modified herders or herder stretch, please do twice each side, 16 to 20 seconds. Flat back, same arm, knees down. Not the reach, the stretch. That's all the cueing points for that one. I went to school for two years and learned that. I told you guys in 15 seconds. All right, back of that leg, last stretch, last object of the day. Alicia, she's running this class from Calgary. Alicia, if you can hear me, I'm pretty much wrapping this up now. I can hear what the front desk here at the Buchanan Center. So I'm in Edmonton, for those who are curious, at the Buchanan Center right back Commonwealth Stadium. Amazing building, fantastic people. It's a privilege to be here, I'm very lucky. But they're doing a meeting in the other room because everything's virtual now, we're all on Zoom and stuff. 
My wife is on like seven hours of meetings online a day for her job. She sits at a computer all day. If she has meetings, coffee meetings, and she grabs a coffee and sits on her computer or on her phone. I've made her move. She was at the table. I made her move to the couch, to the bedroom, to the office. All right, come on. Up. Go outside. I bought a Wi-Fi extender so she can go in the backyard for some meetings, just so she's not sitting in one place for eight hours. Because I'm a good husband. All right. That's everything I have planned for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I have no doubt. Maybe there's three people there. Maybe there's 50. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, send your comments, everything, to the Buchanan Center if you enjoyed the course, the class, pardon me. If there's something you liked, something you didn't like, something you'd like to see more of when we keep doing this in the future with other instructors or if I come back as well, uh, please do let us know. Absolutely. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful week, today being Monday. Go outside while it's not raining <laughs> and enjoy that fresh after rain smell. I live right by the river valley, so I'm going for a walk with my dog for like two hours, and he's going to smell everything. We're going to cover six blocks in two hours. It's going to be great. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and uh, thanks so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Thanks, Paul. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.